time for member statements. I'm, I recognize the member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Yes. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to pay tribute to a politician in my region that has left us at the age of 67 years old, Mr. Lalonde. He was mayor of Alfred County from 2003 to 2014. He held the office as a president in 2007 and 11, and has worked to advance Francophonie as the president of this French Association of Municipalities in Ontario. Before heading to this direction in politics, he worked in 30, 30 years in the education system. He was a teacher, a school counselor in the Ministry of Francophonic Services, and a director. He was a member, a founder, founding member for uh, an association in the sector of arts. He was a proud Franco-Ontarian, Mr. Speaker. It was a pleasure to meet with him as he was a mayor of this town. And I can tell you that he was devoted to his, uh, the well-being of his community. Many politicians can take Mr. Lalonde as an example in terms of balancing his duties as a mayor and as a father. He had great accomplishments and yet his family was his greatest and he was proud of them. Madame Lalonde, to Madame Lalonde, his, his children, his great children, we offer you our sincere condolences. Thank you. Merci. Member statements. The member for Key Wetinon. Uh, Miigwetza, Speaker. Uh, the Sulakot Bombers are a two-year-old uh, junior A hockey team in, from Kiwetnuk. Uh, they were named in honor of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry's fleet of Canadair uh, CL-415 water bombers, the planes we exclusively use to fight wildfires. The Sulakot Bombers are recently uh, captured their first Bill Salonen Cup as champions of the Superior, junior, Superior International Junior Hockey League. In their just second year in the league, they swept the defending champion Cam River fighting walleye uh, in the final series of the playoffs. Uh, the Bombers support their community and the community supports our local hockey team. They took the time this season to visit uh, nearby First Nations like Lac Sioux and Slate Falls First Nations to engage with local youth and share their knowledge and love for the game of hockey. The Bombers were undefeated in the home game and their every home game against uh, <coughs> when they played against the, in the hangar, the Sulikot Memorial Arena, to sell out crowds for their entire playoff run. This week, uh, the Bombers are traveling s south to Oakville to compete against the, uh, the other champions of the eight member uh, leagues of the Canadian Junior Hockey League for the Centennial Cup, the, uh, the, the Junior A uh, title. Congratulations and good luck to the Bombers. Uh, we will be cheering you on. Miigwech. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Thunder Bay, Atacoka. Thank you, Speaker. It is indeed a privilege to rise today in recognition of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine University, locally known as Nozam U. Mr. Speaker, Nozam is Canada's first independent medical university and one of the country's greatest education and physician workforce success stories. More than just a medical school, it was purpose-built in 2002 by the Ontario PC government as a strategy to address the physician shortage and healthcare needs of the region. Born of a grassroots movement, Nazam is a made-in-the-north solution to regional health care inequities, which requires strong ties and engagement with over 500 organizations and over 90 remote rural, indigenous, and francophone communities. Today, more Nazam University-trained students from across the north choose family medicine as a career than any other medical school in Canada. Since its creation in 2002, Nazam U has trained 902 doctors. 88% of those doctors who did both their undergraduate and residency training have stayed in the region and served the people of Northern Ontario. Mr. Speaker, I take this opportunity to extend my deepest gratitude to Dr. Sarita Verma for her leadership, passion for serving our people of the North, 
and sincere willingness to collaborate with me in advancing the NASM vision. Enjoy your well-earned retirement, but don't go too far. We look forward to what the future holds for NASM in our communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. On Friday, London MPPs had the chance to tour the Health Outreach Mobile Engagement, or Home Bus, as part of RNAO's Take Your MPP to Work Day. It's an impressive collaboration between CMHA Thames Valley Addiction and Mental Health Services, London Cares Homelessness Response Services, and London Intercommunity Health Centre, Middlesex London Paramedic Services, and Regional HIV AIDS Connection. In 2021, these partners came together to improve the health outcomes and health equity of highly marginalized individuals in London. The team meets clients where they are, offering a low barrier, yet full scope primary and acute care, follow-up care, and referrals to other wraparound services. The bus is tight, but incredibly efficient. What struck me most was how nimble this brilliant program was. The team of nurse practitioner, registered nurse, and community worker, the RN spoke about how this allowed them to work to their full scope of practice. This model builds trust, relationships, re-establishes connections, and provides access to the vital wraparound service supports to help people get their health and lives on track. And no one gets turned away. A quote that will remain with me was, there are no hard to serve people, only hard to access services. Mm -hmm. Hardworking RNs and the team at LIHC were clear where provincial funding comes up short. What is missing is wage parity for nurses. It's the not-so-well-kept secret that nurses are dramatically underpaid for home and community care. They receive a fraction of what long-term care and acute care nurses are paid. Additionally, community health centres have not seen a base budget increase in over a decade. It's time this government stopped attacking nurses and frontline workers, respect them, thank them, pay them properly, and invest in the community-based health care that community health centres provide. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. Winston Churchill is famously quoted as saying, "We make a living by what we get, and we make a life by what we give." And this spirit, the spirit of generosity and selfless service, was honoured in Niagara West at two local award ceremonies hosted last week. At the Good Citizen Awards ceremony hosted by the Town of Lincoln, 28 local recipients were honoured for their outstanding achievement, commitment and excellence in our communities. And at the Paul Harris Awards evening hosted by the Rotary Club of Lincoln, three local recipients were honoured for their outstanding community service. Jennifer Toes, Sheila Laundrie and Martha Kralt. I highlighted the common commitment of Jennifer, Sheila and Martha to family, education and the performing arts at the Paul Harris Awards event in Vineland last Tuesday. Jennifer was celebrated as one of the 50 faces of Lincoln in 2020 and has served as artistic director of the Lamplighter Tour of the Rotary Club of Lincoln, bringing local history to life. Sheila has scripted 15 plays for the Lamplighter Tour and, as an experienced teacher and lifelong learner, earned a Master of Education in 1992, continuing to serve her community as an active volunteer and also a member of her local church. Martha has touched the lives of hundreds of children and youth as a preschool program coordinator at the Grimsby Cooperative Preschool, as well as opening her home to Rotary Exchange students and vulnerable women and children through the YWCA Niagara Regional Transitional Housing uh, Program. Martha, Sheila, and Jennifer, thank you for demonstrating service above self and helping to build a strong community spirit in West Niagara. From lake to lake, it's people like you who make Niagara West, West one of the most vibrant communities to live in in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Ottawa West McKee. Thank you, Speaker. On April 19, I was very pleased to be able to host the second annual Ottawa West Nepean and Good Neighbour Awards. These awards celebrate the people in our community who brighten and sustain the lives of their neighbours every day in ways big and small. They are all nominated by members of our community. Some of them, like Shannon, Zoe, Jennifer, Miriam, Rana, and Trisha, are amazing volunteers for local community organizations like Matthew House, the Caldwell Family Center, the Nepean Rito Osgood Community Resource Center, and the Ottawa Valley Brain Injury Association. They are all doing incredible work supporting newcomers in low-end communities and people with concussions. Others, like Neil, Leanne, and Paul, show up every day for people in their community, helping with moves, childcare, shoveling driveways, and lending a helping hand to newcomers and people living with disabilities. 
Bill and Jeannie are teachers, sharing their wisdom and life experience with our community. Laura is a school librarian who tirelessly advocates for reading and connects kids with books. Murray, Joyce, Jane, and Margot are community builders, bringing people together, forging connections, and creating social networks that support and sustain one another. David brightens the lives of his neighbors every single day with a positive message, and Pam supports her neighbors in adopting ecologically sustainable practices. In a time when there's so much in the world that can make us feel anxious or concerned, these neighbors remind us that we are always surrounded by goodness, and there is always someone there to lend a helping hand. Thank you so much to each one of you for being a good neighbor. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Today, May 6, marks the beginning of Women's Health Week. Women's Health Week, anchored by Mother's Day, is celebrated annually to raise awareness and engagement about lived experiences in women's health. I'm proud to be part of a government that this fall announced an expansion to Ontario's breast screening program. Beginning this October, women aged 40 to 49 will now be eligible for Ontario breast screening program, improving the odds for early detection. I'd like to highlight outstanding work the Women's Health Coalition in advancing a movement to speak openly, learn and engage to address barriers, gaps and biases in menstrual, re menstrual reproductive and sexual health through all ages and stages of women's health experience. The Women's Health Coalition works tirelessly to advocate, communicate and connect on those very important issues. I am proud to be an ally of the Women's Health a coalition and women's health in general speaker. The Women's Health Coalition is a diverse network of women and families, healthcare professionals, community organizations, and business leaders who have come to, together to advance women's health. Women's health is a matter of, to all of us in our homes, our communities, and workplaces across Ontario. Speaker, I encourage all my colleagues to join me in celebrating Women's Health Week and the Women's Health Coalition for their remarkable contributions to, health, to a healthier, more inclusive society. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member's statements. Next, the member for Markham Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to pro proudly highlight and even that speak volume about the values and sense of community within the riding of Markham Thornhill. Last week, I had a privilege of hosting a community leader cleanup event with the residents of Markham Thornhill. Markham residents understand the importance of taking responsibility for the environment and take pride in keeping their neighborhood clean. April was the eighth month in the city of Markham, and it was amazing to witness firsthand as over 50 residents, especially children, youth, came together to participate in our cleanup event. Together, we rolled up our sleeves and set out the beauty of one of our amazing local park, the park called John Daniel Park. This event was a testament to the power of community collaboration and civic engagement. It showcased working together, we can create positive change and make lasting impact on our surroundings. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the volunteers who dedicated their time and energy to this worthy cause. Mr. Speaker, your commitment to our community is truly inspiring, and I am immensely proud to represent such a proactive and creating, caring and creative constituents. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements? Member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise today to encourage members of this House and the people of Ontario to take part in May is Museum Month. Here, here. Organized by the Ontario Museum Association, this month long celebration honours more than 700 museums, galleries, and heritage sites in Ontario, along with their 11,000 employees and 37,000 volunteers. For 24 years now, May is Museum Month has celebrated Ontario's rich cultural heritage. This year's theme, Museums for Education and Opportunity, underscores the crucial role of Ontario's museums as hubs of lifelong learning, innovation, and cultural understanding. Here, here. As we mark this month, it's fitting to announce that the Canadian Canoe Museum in Peterborough opens its doors to visitors on May the 13th. 
Our government proudly supported the construction of this new institution, which represents a vital part of Canadian heritage and history. Mr. Speaker, Ontario's museums make substantial social and economic con contributions to our communities, enhancing the quality of life for residents and attracting visitors from both near and far. These institutions bring people together to serve as platforms for conversations about our past, present, and future, and foster connections that enrich our local economies and highlight our diverse stories. I extend my gratitude to the OMA and all of its members for preserving our history and curating dynamic educational content. I also recognize Ontario's many museum volunteers and thank them for their dedication to the communities that they serve. Here, here. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.